And we're live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another um, the narrative live stream here in Whangarei, New Zealand. Didn't see much of today because I slept trying to catch up on my slip deprivation that I've been going through trying to get my body clock to get stuff together again. Uh, so tonight we're going to be talking with um, Constantinos Petrolis. You made it, it perfectly. <laughs> Excellent. So I'm going to bring... Um, KP on, and he's going to talk about his background as an artist uh, as well. He's an art teacher, and he's a Greek living in Estonia. Mm -hmm. I always keep thinking of him as a, a Spanish person, and I always get corrected, which I'm very happy with because I hate getting things wrong, even though I do it all the time. So um, here we go. Let's put um, KP on, and I'll come to the background. And KP, please take over and tell us all about yourself. Yeah, thank you. Uh, well, I my name is Konstantinos. I'm from Greece, and uh, I'm a freelance artist, a comic book creator, um, and uh, I'm, a, I'm an art teacher substitute one uh, in Estonia. Um, I, I'm I have for the last couple of years uh, my series Still Got Metal Team being published uh, through Rising Sun Comics, a Los Angeles-based indie publisher, uh, and. Um, it's it's basically science fiction superhero horror story it's 12 issues long split into three arcs of four so the first arc is already uh finished and published i'm producing the second arc now and uh it, it looks uh, from the uh, judging from the feedback i get from people even many i don't know as well as from the editor so far that things go really well currently i serve also as an illustrator to to projects about the new zealand division with uh the host here uh the one uh, i guess this is the main topic of our discussion today will be you know the one i'm, I'm getting busy with is the, is the comic strip we do together um pj and cb the modern bears and we also have a couple of other stories that i'm gonna be involved uh, into supernatural horror ones if i define them correctly and i think this all these projects are gonna be awesome and and uh Malfunction here is a very creative mind, a huge inspiration for someone like me, and he's the creator of these stories that I illustrate for him currently. So I think the huge credit should go always to the writer first. Yeah. Um, tell us about um, your, uh, you know, your background and what you've been up to um, recently um, across, you know, living in Estonia. What's it been like with, you know, in 2020, the crazy year, you know, that it's been? <laughs> Yeah, well, <clears throat> in Estonia, initially, um, for the period of uh, starting from March to uh, April or beginning of May, it was uh, lockdowns, businesses closed down for good, uh, restrictions, masks and all, but um, later it went on more normal, and then, like a couple of weeks uh, ago, <sighs> Uh, we don't have any lockdowns, but they made they have made masks like mandatory. Uh, mm -hmm. Which I mean, you still have the right maybe to not put one, so most people now do. Uh, but um, they may restrict you when it comes to services, uh, public transportation, who knows what else. And I think I don't know. Uh, they talk about this uh, uh, Pfizer vaccine going on, being bought yeah. by, by the millions. And all that in such a short amount of time, I don't know. Some things don't make much sense for me right now here, but it's going to get really expensive for the countries that are involved in all these, um, you know, unnecessary oh, or unnecessary pub, um, um, products they need to buy to safeguard their um, their people. I know that, like for us, we're lucky here in New Zealand because we're we jumped in really quick, and then later on we're into lockdown, and then we came out of lockdown, then we seemed back to normalcy, and then we went back into lockdown and um, to a different level, and then we just totally came out of it, and everybody's like, you know, it seems to be like normal for me. I mean, like I can walk around, do everything I want, and no restrictions, people around here, no masks, uh, and there's no huge cases or deaths that I'm aware of, because every time there would be, there would be like, everybody would be up in arms, you know, talking about it on the media, but like, there's no sort of um, big, huge things like that. I mean, yesterday there was a whole uh, arm wrestling competition here down the line, you know, and so, you're, when you're arm wrestling, you're breathing in each other's face. So if there's nothing about masks there. So I don't know how people think that like this thing sort of that you're going to breathe in all the time is going to help you. But hey, I'm not a scientist and I don't really um, understand that sort of thing. All I know is that 
the more restrictions you put on put on people, the harder and uh, more introverted people become. And you know, you sort of get insulated and you go into your own little bubble. And after a while, if you're too used to it, it's, it becomes a bit hard trying to get out of that whole mold again. So let's um, let's go on to about these projects that we've been talking. Um, you've been talking about and. Let's start with um, Silk and Metal Tim because I think um, hear the back, I want to hear the background of this uh, about this book because I mean we've talked about it previously but it's been a while and a lot of things have been happening. Yeah. Um, tell us how you did, you know came up with Silk and Metal Tim. Yeah, well <laughs> there is a short typo there on the title. It's, it's uh, Steel uh, and Metal Team. It's the names of the two uh, protagonists. Uh, and uh, it's a, they, they share like a, um, how, how do you say a body cup relationship um, and uh, the story basically takes place um, in um, the, the end of the 21st century in the city of New Glory and uh, there is this experiment taking place it's a combination of science and occultism from a, a young uh, scientist called Annabelle Darsal along with a boy genius uh, colleague uh, Edwin Best and uh, the result is the manifestation of this uh, giant like uh, humanoid uh, whom she calls for some reason steel and kind of enigmatic name maybe does if you have a meaning maybe it does the story will show uh, uh, but after a few months uh, there is another unexpected manifestation that takes place and uh, and uh, you know a, a horde of monstrosity starts jumping out from her chest physically thus killing her uh, violently and uh, then uh, the story the first issue starts basically one year after these events where we find Stilk being having partnered up with uh, Timothy Vince uh, who has cybernetic implants a right a mechanical handed uh, tail that are full of gadgets and weapons and so he that's how he got he gets the nickname metal team and together they fight these monstrosities under the leadership of daryl best who is the father of edwin the young colleague who helped annabelle with the experiment so there is you know uh that's people are involved a lot here um uh, in this story they have their own they have their own uh, problems going on um uh, we see their inner world uh, uh, you know and uh, at lots of action and horror and gore occasionally they have their own powers that they have to discover little by little uh, unexpected um, twists uh, mysteries uh, questions that need answers um and it's like um, a situation that starts from the city where the story initially takes place and um then it, as the story progresses you can see uh it gets uh, like bigger proportions it's uh it goes maybe to a universal even a cosmic level it has its own uh, layers that it, you know it's uh i make i try to make it entertaining but also it is the first story still can metal team is the first story of seven that they form together in its own universe uh but it's story will still stand independently but we'll just have a um, some a few key characters that will keep appearing and they have their own role to play and at some point the story will focus on them in towards the end of the whole like of this universe that i create so that's pretty much the story here let me get me back in there all right so we've got a few people watching and there's also lena from um thessalonica yeah that's my mom Hi, oh, hey. <laughs> well, there's nothing like having a mum and or parent or you know sibling supporting what you do, and you know, and it's just awesome because I know my parents have always supported me uh, yeah, doing what I'm important. doing. I remember my mum saying 20 odd years ago, maybe even longer than that, saying, "Whatever you do, as long as you're happy, I'm behind you." You know, and it's been yeah, it's of changes, and still having the backing of your parent is really good. Hey, so. Let's move on to uh, one of our projects, which yeah. is uh, Shibi and PJ. Oh, I went and yeah. found them. All right. So, mm -hmm. uh, PJ, uh, this is PJ here. Yep. And um, and this is actually, I think it's a Kira, the bunny. Yeah. The bunny. Yeah. So there's Kira here that we kind of based loosely based our characters off, called um, PJ and Shibi. And we also got stuck uh, on the live stream here. We got Suckers, 
He's uh, a friend of mine. Uh, Hi, man. Lucas. Yep. Looks like um, so, um, looks like an artist there. He is. Yeah. He is. All right. Hello, fellow artists. All right. So I mean, you do everything freehand. So um, you know, art wise, and we, you know, I jumble around with it on digitally, and um, you know, we've been looking at. Huh, when do we start that? Do we start this? What was it? June, maybe. March? No, I think okay. March or May, around March or May, somewhere there. Yeah, hmm. the beginning of the. So, we, yeah. so PJ was like a background of a PJ. PJ was a T-shirt design I did way back in ninety. Wow, maybe ninety-five. I think it was. It was a real. It was like a little small little uh, uh, teddy bear with a halo, but the halo oh. was attached with a you know attached to his head with a you know yes, another yes. piece of wire or something. And so it was kind of like a um, a takeoff on the name um, Pearl Jam and um, PJ because I used to be a really huge Pearl Jam fan back then. And um, excuse me. And so it was, but it was it had a different meaning, and I don't want to say the meaning on online because people will, go, will be turned away from what what the whole other thing is. But PJ was basically from taken from P, Pearl Jam, PJ. Um, so that you know, I did that for a bit, and then. I, I lost the designs. I lost the T-shirt. I um, I don't know what how what the design actually looks like anymore, apart from the test thing. So I have no idea what it was supposed to look like. The Chibi itself, which is the um, which is a which was the name of my sister's um, ska punk band, a uh, rock band, uh -huh. alternate band uh, that she had at church and um, and you know pretty hip church. And so you know they had the ska. All female uh, band members in their, um, I think it was late twenties or early twenties, and so they were called the Shebies. And so I decided on a on going to the first light of the millennium, which was in two thousand, traveling on the bus to on an eight hour bus trip. Along the way, we stopped at a township, and they had a sale on for the sewing hobby place, and I went and I went. I need to spend some money to keep me occupied for this eight hour trip. At that time, it was about six hours, I think. And so I got orange fur, mm -hmm. uh, teddy bear fur, and orange, um, um, sorry, uh, thread and needle. And wow. for the rest of the trip, I basically, oh, and the pattern. I got the pattern, and I, actually, I think I actually bought a scissors as well so I could cut it out. So mm -hmm. I cut all these patterns out on the bus trip to Gisborne, which is where we saw the first light in New Zealand 2000. Mm -hmm. And I started sewing this all together, using up my time. And so that became a little, a little kid, Shibi, uh, of this millennial ch uh, child that we, you know, basically, it's kind of, yeah, 20 year old, um, 20 year old character millennial. called Shibi that we have in, the, um, in this um, cartoon strip that we're doing. So. Um, do you want to hold up some of the images you've got there, because, and show us what what you've got, or is it all on like on your? Uh, it is uh, on the computer. Uh, let's see if I can share something from here. Um, so, basically, because I don't work, I don't draw anything by hand. But I so I tried to go early on about February, March, trying to draw something, and I came up with some designs, and it sucked. I really suck at hand because I've got a hand injury. A hand, a freeze freehand drawing and I just I was struggling with it and I was like I, this is not something that I can do and I won't be able to do it to the best of my abilities that I want it to look like and so we shipped around and um, I took the fork and we looked for artists who could actually come on board and do this for for me and for our project and for our team to put it together and so we found okay. that KP was really you know excited about this project and we thought okay well we looked at KP's art and was like I'm sure KP can do it. And the other person who was, you know, we were discussing was that, like, well, he's got a different art style. I'm like, no, no, no. I think I can, I can work with KP to <laughs> do this. And it's like, but it's cartoons. This is not, you know, he's sci-fi and all that. And this is cartoons. And I'm like, no, we can work this out. I'm sure. And so I put it through and KP comes up with all these designs. I'm like, yeah, I was right. You know, and mm -hmm. the other guy admitted, yeah, I was right. Because I realized that I think, um, when you really, if people are um, passionate about the story, they will always do something and go beyond what they, you know, what they're thinking about or what you're even thinking about. 
So um, <laughs> I'm going to put that up. But even he, yeah. So, oh, uh, Sarkis is saying uh, digital artists are pussies, including himself. And I agree. I mean, I wish, <laughs> I, I wish, you know, because I mean, like, I was hand drawing um, Iron Maiden, right, characters growing up. I was doing horror artwork growing up. And so, uh, in my 20s and so on. And so I miss not being able to freehand draw anymore because my fingers clamp up, um, my hand clamps up, sorry. And so that stops me from just, you know, saying, oh, you know what, I'll just get the digital pen out and we'll just go for it. And plus the other thing about digital pen is you can correct in instantly without having to, you know, um, just sit there and just correct. And copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, line around it the way you want it using the digital app that, that I'm working on, which is Clip Studio Paint, I think it is called. And so, yeah, so, you know, so I started trying to come up with this, um, looking at social media and um, and the story and, you know, what's going on, everybody's getting cancelled, you know, this whole Hollywood thing, and everybody's getting in each other's throat. And so I thought, I need to make a satire, political satire type cartoon strip. But not only that, I want to move into like The Simpsons. I can tell a bigger story, you know, have a mm -hmm. whole, or The Family Guy, or, um, you know. A sitcom of some sort. Yeah, a sitcom sort of yeah. thing that's actually more, yeah. uh, you know, sort of funny, family oriented. There's no sort of like rudeness to it. There's, mm -hmm. you know, it's a bit more kind of, I fill out my portfolio because I do a lot of, um, you know, superhero stories, sci fi stories. Uh, you know, supernatural magic type stuff, but I wanted to do something yeah. that was a bit more fun that you could just go, hey, kid, here, read this, like Garfield and uh, Astrid, stuff like that. So, I mean, mm -hmm. that's my inspiration behind it for myself, which she, PJ and Shibi is, um, is basically trying to do Garfield three, uh, three panel strips. But we've done that. So we've got about 10 done so far since March. And remember, like, when we started doing this, it was trying to create brand new characters out of nothing, even though, like I said, these characters I had, they don't exist anymore, but we have the dolls and stuff that I could say, here, this is what I want you to do it off. And so we came up with some pretty cool ones. Now, did you send it to me on um, no, Facebook no, or something? I, I shared the screen here. I shared the okay, screen cool. through the computer, yeah. Here we go. Is it visible? Can you see it? Um, no, we don't see it yet. Um, so basically, PJ and Shibi is called PJ and Shibi the Modern Bears. So we wanted to work with the fact that these guys are in our, you know, right now, they're happening right now. They're not some 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 alternate universe type thing, but these, these are animal anthropomorphized morphed animals that live in our in our world and in current day, uh, but you know. And probably in the same world, but they're actually living in their own, you know, space. So, okay. the cool thing about this is um, to be able to just take whatever's on social media or whatever's online and try to write a story around it. The hard thing is when you're used to writing 90 page scripts and then having to write one page scenes that for three panels and tell a story, I found that really difficult at the start, but because I'd read so many growing up, you know, of um, and collecting, to be honest, Asterix and, um, mm -hmm. and Snoopy, I forgot to mention Snoopy, Snoopy and Charlie Brown and uh, Garfield, you know, comics books and uh, from secondhand store, stores, uh, it's, you know, these things, uh, inspirations are already in your head. Uh, and so you sort of go, well, how do I now make squeeze into a story? So we've been, you know, we've been working since March. Uh, character, we designed a character two weeks ago, was it? Um, Joji, but Baba. Yeah, yeah. So exactly. to flesh out this whole family, because we've fleshed out the other family, uh, and we're now giving them grandparents uh, of the bears. So PJ and Shibi, father, daughter. Then they have a mother named is it Mira or Malina? Malina. Ma Malina. Yeah. Right. So the polar bear father, um, grizzly bear mother and a uh, mixed polar bear and grizzly bear child, a 20-year-old. Their parents are around about 40-year-olds, uh, and they all have their own backgrounds of what they are. And then you're also next to them, living next door to them is their cousin, uh, is his cousin, I think, uh, which is uh, Stormy and 
Kira and their new son, which it's, we just designed uh, because I was trying to flesh it out. Because we yeah, wanted to have yeah. someone who was a bit religious or, uh, or you know, not religious, but more spiritual member of, of this um, extended family. And so Joji Bear came about last week or so, or the week, two weeks ago. And so we put, because his dad's black, because he's a black sheep, right? Yeah. And his mom's a bunny. And so I had to go online and figure out how to come up with a spotted white and black bunny. And there is a real actual black and white bunny around with spots, almost spots, in the world, you know. And I thought that was quite funny because I hadn't seen one before, but I somehow must have seen something because I you know, decided this was going to happen in the background. So to do uh, what, so uh, I sent across this Dutch bunny, and they're called Dutch rabbits. So you can actually mm -hmm. look up online and find out the actual existence of these things. They're called Dutch bear, mm -hmm. uh, bunny, uh, rabbits, sorry, Dutch rabbits. And so I sent across these, uh, this photo and I said, this is what this character is going to look like because we can't, how do we meld these two parents into creating a one child that's going to mm -hmm. look like both parents, exactly. right? Exactly. And so we did that. So let me just see now. Okay, so we're just so you know, I sent you a few pictures. I tried to share the screen. I don't think it worked for some reason. So maybe I send a few samples right now. Yeah. Right. So I'll just pop it up from here. So yeah. All right. So hopefully you guys can get a. Sadly enough, not having to be able to do it that way, but um. Here we go. Let me see if you guys can. Oh, no, it's not going to do the great thing that we wanted. Oops, oh, sorry. Let me see if I can get a single issue. But um, the joy of, of technology sometimes does, fails. Oh, here we yeah, go. It does fail sometimes. <laughs> Let me just get this right. There yeah. we go. There's PJ and Shibi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. PJ is a big one. Shibi is a little one. And... You know, so that's your quick draw, um, you know, sort of cartoon images of them. And the great thing about this is that now you got to, you can't just talk about these two, <laughs> two teddy bears talking to each other and you got to create this um, big, huge universe. And that's where you come in. And right, so I just oh, wait a moment. Yeah, I just basically send um, KP the storyline. Say, oh. I want tigers now, I want pandas now, I want leopards now. Hey, yeah, can yeah. you do um, a, um, a teddy bear eating a carrot? Uh, can you do, um, you know, these characters? And he does an amazing job, I have to say. And then can you fill this background up? So this is why I say that me trying to do artwork is going to suck. But if you have an artist come on board to work with you who's actually really excited about the project, yeah. you have a really, um, you know, you have an interested party who's passionate about what you're doing to be able to do a really good job. And that's basically why I want to do this live stream to show you that, you know, when you, when you, the reason is we on, I think it's on the 1st of December, we're going to release this. Uh, oh, here we go. So we're going to release this. Yeah. Uh, Are you able to see something? Cool. So we can see through your web screen there. Excellent. So as we're All talking right. away, yeah, you can flash through that. So, there are our characters. So as you can see, me trying to draw it, it's just going to suck and ruin it. And I thought, you know, have KP come up with all these awesome designs that we can play around with in the long run, having someone who's committed to it and also passionate about it is a great thing. Um, the difficulty is, like I said, um, that, you know, it's trying to squeeze a story, um, a huge story into three panels and I think Indeed. by seeing um, how much work can be in one panel by an artist actually mm -hmm. helps to um, you know morph that story into those three panels and and try to not put too many dialogues in it and even though sometimes I do put a lot of dialogues in it really <laughs> right yeah. so you get little ones like this and they have someone that's like the whole back half the background so dialogue but <laughs> I think I'll get better at it as we go along. But the other thing is that on the 1st of December, um, as I was mentioning, we're going to release the first uh, image online. I mean, it's been online showcasing, but on the website, on the Rise on um, Comics website, which is like, let me see if I can write it down here for you quickly. 
It's on Rising Sun. Comics.com. And it'll be on the 1st of December. So you can see the, um, the work we've been doing. Um, this is one of the panels we did. Uh, the background I um, I messed around with to get that, um, give it a bit of a street, you know, try to bring into that whole um, Simpsons book of it, try to get them a family guy sort of um, home to it. Like it, previously we were just doing inside the house and outside the house, but we never showed where they lived. So I just wanted some like a suburb that they lived in. And um, I haven't even figured out where they actually live. You know, the, I know they live in New Zealand, but I don't know which state. Uh, well, not, we don't have states, we have cities uh, in um, areas. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it's probably going to be here up in Whangarei, but because we have beautiful areas that actually look like that. I think there's one up the road from me that actually looks like that palm, um, you know, the palm trees around the yeah, street yeah. there. And this houses look like that as well. So it's kind of like, um, kind of really works for us. So you want to take it away on the outside there? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you want me to stop sharing or? Sharing. Okay, stop sharing. All right. Then. All right. I hope it was more visible now. I tried to figure out the, the things. Yeah. Sorry if it couldn't search before, but at least we made it now. Um, so, yeah, basically, this story, uh, PJ at CB, he, you know, I, I, what I have seen so far from the, reading the, the script, um, it uh, it involves uh, current uh, situations and phenomena that uh, we see um, across. Uh, first, I mean, my first interaction with it was across the internet. Then I slowly started seeing uh, out on the streets, even here in Estonia. Uh, you know, when it comes to uh, political ideologies and beliefs and reactions towards uh, different types of situations, like. Um, you know, we hear now these terms for the at least for the last couple of years. I do uh, like uh, political correctness, virtue signaling, and um, you know, feminism and uh, racial shopping. You know, the movies, the TV series do this a lot for some reason lately. Comic books, some mainstream companies at least they have gone <laughs> uh, to that towards that track too. So we we. Uh, talk about these things and other things too throughout these characters who are basically anthropomorphic animals uh, and I think their emotions can be expressed uh, much better because they look like that, like cartoon animals. So, um, and of course it is comical. It doesn't supposed to make you feel depressed, sad, to take things too seriously, it's supposed to make you feel lighter inside, to, to make you laugh, to, to enjoy the art and the dialogue. So. That's why I also enjoy it. I also wanted to, to work on, on a comic strip. Uh, ah, thank you, I have another guy here. <laughs> They're joining the conversation, so nice. Uh, so uh, I think comic strips, uh, yeah, they can be a creative challenge because you have to fit so many things into just three panels next to each other. Uh, but for me, you know, it helps me grow in the craft. Uh, it, I, I, I like comics we've seen Snoopy and Garfield, you know, and uh, I'm glad that I have this opportunity to work on this one. And I hope it will have uh, a, a good feedback from people, hence they start reading it. And I believe they will, so. So, yeah. Uh, and, um, we, so far, we, we have basically, uh, let's see, six characters, okay? Uh, and if you go on uh, the Strip's Twitter account, BJ at CB, you can learn much more about them. So I encourage everyone to visit this uh, page, and I will share it too anyway. It's on Twitter, BJ at CB, the modern bears. You can always get updates from there too. Yeah, so um, I, I, I remember, because, because these guys are like, um, well, the first ones we, I think the story we came up with is uh, uh, PJ Wines Insta Fame, and that's probably going to be the first one. You know, like this, the dad's like like a boomer, like I mean, what they call a boomer, which I think I'm I'm a boomer now with my 47. And on the other day, I was like, where did my 27 years of my life go, or 20 years of my life go? I'm like, in my head, I'm still 20. I behave like a 20 year old, but 
how do I suddenly become half, almost half a century? And it's like, you know, I don't look it, but how did, how did this mm -hmm. happen to me? You know? and, and I'm like, well, those 20 years have been really been exciting, interesting and sad sometimes, but the ex emotional experiences you have all, you know, build up to what you are able to actually create as a writer or as an artist, um, you know, going forward. And I think the cool thing is that when you look around with your friends and everybody else, then seem to be normal. And then when you look up online, it's like everybody's going crazy at each other's throats. And I'm like, what is wrong with people online? And so that's when the, then we started, you know, I thought, let's write a story about this. How, how this, you know, the, how does PJ deal with trying to be a, a, 40 year old guy with a 20 year old daughter who has to teach him about all these things and help him out if he does something stupid. And then that sort of flashed out into the other family with um, the, the black sheep and um, sorry, yeah. I should call him Stormy. Stormy, 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 who's Aussie sheep, he's an Aussie mm -hmm. black sheep. And then his uh, wife, Melina, who's a bunny. Uh, and then, no, no. like I said, Ma we just Malena is the wife of PJ. Kira oh, is the wife oh, of Stormy. Kira. Yeah, I yeah. always get those two mixed up. Yeah, don't know yeah. why. I'm, I should have switched the names mixed up early on. But yeah. here we go. So Kira, the bunny, and so, like you said, like it's basically as much as it's like, it's kind of on the nose, kind of um, political satire. Because I think there's something we miss now is the comedy element of just being around your friends and being around your family that people mm -hmm. don't pick up on because it's like, I think it's like 160 word or letters on, uh, on um, Twitter or something like that, that, that you could, you have to say everything you want, all your thoughts in that one tweet. And that's kind of, kind of, I think is, it's kind of sad because, you know, you, you turn your, you find that you're, um, one thing I found was like seeing loved ones turn on each other online because of other people calling them something or other, but not knowing them personally or physically. So if you don't know someone physically or have dialogue with them all the time, you should have no right to say something in their life because they, though you people don't matter, the only people that should matter is your family, your extended family and close friends that actually are part of your life because they know you better than yourself and like i have to i do that with my with my family every month where i just go back to my family every month right for dinner and say what are you guys think of me what i'm doing you know yeah. put me back to the ground i have all these great ideas and then i'll be like okay so cool all right let's have dinner <laughs> you know there's no you know we'll have a bit of dialogue and all that but then we let's have dinner and i think that's what's missing in all of this online stuff is that because people are so divided because they, they can they can hide behind the screen and not be you know exactly. and um, not be seen for their abusive uh, elements or behavior they can't take accountability so they just lash out because they feel like lashing out that day but then they'll stay on lashing out and then let carry on that negative element so the cool thing is writing something funny like you know <laughs> Like Garfield, Garfield, you know, you know, I hate Mondays, and exactly. you know, waking up. Or one of the um, one of the things um, that I, I haven't read yet, but I remember picking up one of our things here in New Zealand is this one here. You know, I, I fight crime, crime. Mm -hmm. and it was on blastosaurus dot com, and um, mm -hmm. yeah, he's uh, Richard's moved over to Aussie um. um America now with his partner there. He got married in LA, I think. Last year or the year before. So he lives there and does the work through there. And so, you know, this is kind of what we're like, not that I, this is where I took it from, but this is basically, like I said, I've never read it, but this is someone in New Zealand that's done that as well. So I think these are cool things. So you know, they're not, mm -hmm. it's not like that I'm the first person or I know, you know, not a unique person doing this or we are a unique people doing this. But there are other people who work in this humor element as well, you know, alongside whatever else they're doing. And I think yeah. adding a bit of comedy to it, you know, putting a bit of Dave Chappelle uh, kind of um, humor to it, you know, and uh, George Carlin, 
they, these sort of guys who, you know, just basically pull no punches, but then laugh along with you and you can laugh along with them. And that's what we want. We want exactly. you guys to read these um, because we're going to try to do them to on have a good basis. time. Yeah. We're going to re release these on a weekly basis on risingsuncomics.com and um, get these, um, you know, to hopefully be on time. <laughs> so if we're not on time, especially it's basically me that's not on time because I'm working on so many different projects. But the other thing is the writing process is not as simple as it might seem because not only do you have to come up with a little um, story, but then you have to come up with the characters that your artist has to, you know, draw. And then you have to come go back and forth and go, I don't like that. Or, yo, that was really good. That background's really good. Again, over a whole week period back and forth. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. I wake, I get work. Yeah, I, I get a, I get a tweet, um, a message in the, like five o'clock in the morning when I'm sleeping. Or, I send a message at about, I think, seven o'clock in the afternoon when you're sleeping, right? So, so this sort of yeah, thing. Exactly. Yeah, so yeah. because we live on the other sides of the world. <laughs> and this sort of thing. And then sometimes I just go, well, I think I won't, I'll just leave them alone for the day, you know? Uh, yeah, it's like so, we have 11 hours difference. And, uh, mm -hmm. and the thing is, like, the process, it's, it's in the, even for a comic strip that, that looks like more simple. Actually, as I said, as, as you mentioned, it's a talent. You have to fit a, a whole scene into three panels, and you have to think of everything, the, the amount of dialogue, because then you have to think of how many balloons will be involved there, and how the characters will fit in its panel, the whole scenery. And it's like many different takes, takes of a film scene. You know, take one, take two. So we, we go around each strip till we make sure we are happy with it and move on to the next one. And I think so far, we have produced 10 strips, right? 10 strips. Mm -hmm. So we, we move on maybe, how many How many will be all in all? Do we know? 60 strips, maybe? Oh, I think I think we've done, yeah, we've done a lot. Uh, sorry, keep messing this up. All right, so I think we've, there's more than 10, uh, like there's, there's more than 10, we've done 10 stories, I'd say. Yeah, yeah but how many there will be all in all in the end? Maybe. I have no idea. I like but the, at the moment the total I would say around about twenty strips probably, you know, yeah. because there's about uh, three sets of okay. there's three sets of three uh, panel um, stories. So there's but there's there's ones that have nine panels in it. So it's like one whole big yeah. story. Then there's ones on that a page. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, for us working on it, like I've got one that's like going to be a nine panel story right now which is you know this whole idea of uh, the a kid going to get her first job you know uh she'd be exactly. yeah. trying to go for her first job but like, what's it like out there right now trying to get a new job right after having yeah. studied having done all that you know especially when you have um, grandparents who could just basically give you whatever you want right they could buy yeah. you whatever you want but you have to now now work for it because your dad doesn't want you to work it doesn't want you to get everything for free he wants to give you some life skills and how yeah. do you deal with that yeah so he thing, he earned uh, inheritance from the from the sales of his land in alaska so i don't know if he's the one to talk about it <laughs> yeah well yeah i think um i think well the way the story is going is like um the grandparents sold up the land in alaska and they moved to hawaii Mm -hmm. And then um, he moved over to New Zealand and he, I think he, 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 I think he's, I'm trying to go for his, he's kind of the, the, the person who rebelled, you know, he's the rebellious teen growing up and did it all for himself. And now he wants the same for his daughter, Shibi. Mm -hmm. And so PJ is like, I don't want her to be spoiled because I think she'll find it harder growing up kind of thing. This is kind of the thing about most like the other 50% of the parents or maybe the 60% of the parents who are like, if I, if I spoil my child this much, they'll find it harder then they'll hate me for letting them, you know, have yeah, an yeah. easy life. But then the other side is when you have, you know, parents who really love their kids will provide them with everything and then trying to find a balance. And yeah. um, so let me just pop, pop up, um, there we go. Roll another one of your friends. 
Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So, we, we, as I said, we're going to be putting out this soon on risingsandcomics.com yeah. uh, in December. That'll take us through to February. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Through the end of January. Um, and then this allows us for about two months where we can carry on writing and creating work. And yeah. hey, do you have like, the latest uh, images of Joji with all the, you know, um, what you do with the t-shirt designs and all that. Uh, I I think I can find it on our messenger here and uh, yeah, so it's from here. Just give me a little moment. Um, sure. So, yeah. Joji, like I said early on, was is a brand new character we created to make it this extended family fully. Like we haven't done the. Um, I'm not. Have you done the artwork for um, PJ's mother yet, the grandparent? Uh, no, not yet. I'm working on it as we speak. Yeah. yeah. So I have no idea what she looks like, but and we haven't. You know, we haven't. We only gave her a couple of screenshots in the next story, and that one probably won't be out until about next February or so. It's a big story that one, uh, as I mentioned. So the other thing is. Um, there, there, there's, you know, there's the grandparents, like I said, comes into the, so we want to go for the extended family on both sides of the family. Um, you know, then we introduce how, um, how does uh, Stormy, who's the sheep, um, the male sheep becomes part of, you know, PJ's, being PJ's cousin. So obviously there's going to be some sort of, you know, family, his sister's marriage, you know, so on, and um, and so we've introduced the okay. sister's name, but we haven't said what she looks like yet or whatever. And so this is the fun part of actually working with an artist and actually creating an entire new universe of characters. You know, it's the same as when you, you, you know, when you look at you know um, when you've got like um, you know something like is it George from Garfield? I can't remember uh if it's. George or uh, John, uh, John Arbuckle. It was a Jim. Um, you know, Jim John, Davis John, work. But like, John, they've got Jim Davis work, yeah. John, that's right. John, J O N. And so he, he, he's got his nurse, uh, like his vet, and so on. And then you extend. But the cool thing is, like I said, we, we don't stay inside the house. We go into the world. We go to school. We go to uh, the park. Mm. Uh, you know, we go to the street. Uh, you know, we go to universities. And so, you know, next one we're going to um, a fast food store. You know, it's the whole um, introducing these characters and, and the readers, you know, like yourselves, hopefully, uh, to this universe of these families. And I think this is probably right. Here we go. a really, really cool way to, um, you know, introduce you guys to the characters as we do this by having, you know, in the mm -hmm. past you didn't have sort of the sort of, you know, technology to say here's the two artists talking about these characters that's going to be released mm -hmm. soon you have to pay you know you had to pay the hundred tens of thousands of dollars to get you know your publication out there and then have to put it on then have to sell it to someone to say put this on all right so uh, can, can you see the designs is it there no do you want to do the a screenshot oh sorry you have it it's my fault there we go so this is um let me single page this so here we go. So this is Joji Bear. And I said to um, I said to um, KP, I said, look, because Tino, I said, this is what this kid's got to look like. For this first image, I want him sitting down on his, uh, on his backside with his knees up playing a Game Boy. Mm -hmm. And that's, and I said, this is the, uh, I need him to do, be into a hockey team called the Trinity. Um, Grizzly hockey size team. hockey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's got to have a, um, he's got to have a hat like mine. Uh, you know, baseball hat, and he's got a hoop of hoodie, and so we come up with this. And the other thing is, with cartoons, it's you, you know, it's I don't know how you do it, but man, but like to be able to flash it out, you know, the characters. And I mean, I'm more 2D, so having something like 3D come out looks really cool. Um, what like was it like trying to create this character? 
how long I, I think you know with every description you give me it's time i have instantly a vision and then i work it a little here and there but it doesn't take me long it's like maybe i have full uh shape and form of a character within a couple of hours you know i have the, the first uh, is that like glimpse and then it's just a few hours work till i get uh, to the final or it, i hope it is it's time the final form of the character that's why we have a constant exchange of info uh, and you know till we both are happy with it mm. so because yeah. i wanted to um i decided that we need like i said earlier on that we needed a a a character that was spiritual uh mm. if not religious and so joji is the only uh is the only only who goes to church, yes. Yeah, who goes to church or yeah. ta tabernacle or mosque or whichever. But we don't, you know, we're not going that way. We, I don't know where we're going with this character, but I like this character because I think we needed someone who actually represents this part of society, and you, you know, to flesh out the entire, uh, you know, because I want a child. I really want a child in this because I thought you got You could at least now have uh, like the the grandparent, the parent. The millennial and now the gen, gen z the child so you got this whole um whole family of what's that four generations yeah, of yeah. you know family members that can have dialogue together that can do silly things uh you know uh we wrote a story about um bullying uh which came out of nowhere and then the other week it, someone on twitter actually did that which was like really funny because we're like you, you should only eat the food that you're supposed to be. Eat, uh, you know, like, uh, yeah, a bear, yeah. Is, yeah. A bear yeah, is yeah. only supposed to eat uh, berries or something like that, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and it then, was uh, CB. She was being bullied, and they told her, yeah. yeah, you should, you know, something like you shouldn't eat carrots because you're a bear, if I remember yeah. well. Yeah. And then last week, someone was online going on about that you can't eat Asian food if you're, you know, or sell Asian food if you're white. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm like, I, I learned how to cook French cuisine before I knew how to cook curry. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> that was it was like in my late teens, and my mom had to come and teach me how to do it, uh, and so on. And then I, I learned how to cook Chinese food and Japanese food, you know, sort of. And I, I think this whole idea of um, people telling other people what to do, but mm -hmm. not having fun with it, is silly. You got to at least have fun with it if you tell, you know, if you try and tell a story, especially with cartoons. So I mean, this. So, Cape, um, hold on. So, Jody Bear is going to be, you know, is our Gen Y, a Gen Z character. Uh, as I mentioned, the fourth, no, the last generation um, at the moment that I can think of, unless we add a baby in there somewhere. But we'll uh, see how that one goes. <laughs> right? So yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you never know what you, uh, you know, what's going to happen because we're still telling a story from you know from a to z and we're not over you know we're not even up to b yet right or maybe we are because of joji bear baba right so that's the family name so i don't know did we come up with a family name for pj uh for pj oh. no 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 um, wait we i think um uh, no i we have malina's uh family malina's name the Grays, isn't it? yeah 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 Grey. yeah, yeah. So Melina comes from a, um, the the mother bear comes from a arist aristocracy or something yes. like that. What is that called? Yeah, yeah. it is. Uh, yeah, it's, it is an aristocratic family from uh, Northland America, and she herself has also been nominated as Miss Bear back in 1989. Yeah, yeah. and uh, she's the lead researcher for ship wool exports to Alaska. So, yeah, That's so being Pete's wife, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the fun thing about this. It's like coming, come up, coming up with ideas off the cuff, but you know, because you're trying to like, how do I flesh these uh, these characters out? It's it's like they don't have any like there is no like freaking Bible that's been written like you have with Superman or Batman, you know, or, or even with um, you know Garfield, which tells you exactly what you're supposed to write. So you're making it up as you go along, as well as trying to be as much. 
trying to ground these characters in the real world, but also not make them look stupid or make them make them feel stupid as you read them because you're like these guys have to have real emotions they have to have real uh world um lives right in their world whatever you know whatever the world's like they, they and that is what i wanted to 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 talk about what you just said there about them having real emotions while i am contributing to the illustration part i connect with each one of them uh, because initially i thought i maybe have only one favorite character from the cast here i thought maybe pj is like the my favorite character i like like the the you know the the whiny little uh, 40 year old father like with his chubby chicks the already little beard that it is uh, but then I, as i go through its character you know each one is unique and i like all of them I, maybe it's because I am very close to the work here, but um, I think each one is is worth to to give a shot. You know, is it its character is interesting and unique because of these emotions and thoughts they have. So, which which do you think is your favorite? If you had to, you know. If I had to pick one, uh, yeah. I mean, right now, the way I know them so far, uh, and we still have my, many stories to tell with them. Uh, I mean, I think uh, I think I like uh, PJ. I think I like PJ yeah. right now, and not because he's the protagonist or you know of the title, <laughs> uh, yeah. but uh, but I, I like that. <clears throat> You know, maybe it's because I, I see myself in the future as a father and I always want to have a daughter at first. And so maybe as the daughter grows up, it's not easy to deal with her that much. Maybe, and, uh, he, you know, he, he tries to do that and she, she tries to do it, to do things her way, tries to bring him along, like with the political correctness issue, right? Mm -hmm. And yet, even if they fight, on something they will still start together, they will still have conversations, they love each other. That's that's very interesting for me to see it in development. Yeah. So maybe that's why. <laughs> yeah, I, I I um I have no favorites. This is the thing. It's like I um yeah. I, I would have thought I like PJ as well, but like as I go along and then I thought I'd like Shibi because you know Shibi seems to be um uh, the more more sort of you know fun things she can do and stuff, uh because she's a twenty year old and it's just not fun things, but like just the way she relates to the dead. And, yeah. you know, it's not like you, I'm trying to pull up ideas out, out of my brain on how to do these characters. But I think this next story is going to be interesting for her because it's a big story. It's not like a just a three panel story. It's going to be like nine panels, um, you know, so basically a whole, almost a month's worth of story uh, work that goes into this one. But I think we haven't actually done any a lot of work on Malin, uh sorry on Kira yet the bunny who's an activist and we haven't really got into what her background is why she does it uh what what she's active about and so on and we haven't done a lot about um uh about stormy either the lamb or the sheep yeah and now that we've and then we've introduced introduced a new character all over with Joji Baba, which mm -hmm. means now I have to go to uh, school, all right? And with yeah. this kid, uh, we've got to take this kid to school. We've got to take him around his other friends, or his age group. He's a he's he's a gamer. He's got his own YouTube channel, right? So he games yeah, yeah. online. And this is you know this is where we're going to go with this uh, this character, and we haven't even done that yet. So and then then we can go into the whole um, rich. Uh, grandparents and all that and you know I think this is the cool thing that having something like this in a simple format but is actually actually not really simple at all <laughs> right it's not really simple at all when you look at all the work that goes into it and the, all the thought that goes into it it's not simple at all and wow. um, and I think um, the two of us working together on it on just this one project is brilliant because it means that I mean, I'm enjoying it because it means I can just throw these ideas out there and I can get back all this, you know, flashed out images of what I'm thinking in my head. But then I'll go, you'd, I'll go to myself, I think I messed up. I need to fix this. Hopefully he'll be able to fix what I've messed up. Like <laughs> like autocorrection, like uh, like the character names that I always mis mix up between the, um, the two mothers and um, 
and now we're introducing more characters. I think the more characters we get, is, you know, it's going to be harder to try to keep on top of it, especially with me with my memory. But I think you guys are going to love this uh, and um, what we're doing, and I'm I'm really excited about. It. I'm passionate about it because I think it's just the right thing for the for the fun times that we're having. <laughs> you know. To, Put a bit of humor into the fun times that we're having right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'll, leave you, I'll leave you with the last words and um, after you finish up here and then we'll close up for the night because it's already almost an hour. Yeah, yeah. To talk about this. So, you yeah, go for it, Patty. Yeah, all right. So, uh, I encourage uh, as many as possible that I will spread the word even more from now on anyway uh, to join us in this uh, journey of this beautiful strip. So far basically we have introduced six characters, two couples and their children. This is the six ca main characters so far. We will introduce more and we make sure you always keep on track and we hope you will you know, join in uh, for the ride and um, we just, you know, me and Malfunks were here and the other creators in general. This is a um, part of our of our life. This is the fuel that keeps us going to keep being creative, to share our stories and characters. And we hope, you know, we, we will have so, so many others behind us coming along to see what we are doing. And I, I was the same thing for this trip. I, I like it. I love it even, you know, I, I participate and I'm very glad that I have the opportunity to do so. So, yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't know that, Sakis. I didn't know. That's interesting. They're right there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there was a, a, a comment about our character, Joji, here from uh, our friend Sakis. So that was an interesting point there. Yeah. So, yeah, if you have nothing else to add, I just uh, keep looking forward to create more strips. Uh, more panels <laughs> and uh, we will start uploading soon on Rising Sun Comics so remember that risingsuncomics.com and the Twitter account of the street PJ at CP the modern bears these two things if you can remember that would be great that way you can keep yourselves updated uh, for this uh, comic strip um, finishing it let me just talk about the name of Joe and why I chose Joji the name just yeah. in case filthy frank <laughs> <Zach is thinking laughs> that. so joji comes from a name that i gave to my uh, a close friend of my female close friend female friend of mine way back in mid no when I, about 20 years ago uh just to drive me everywhere so I, her name's joanne but i called her joji and so later on we just everybody started calling her joji and so i thought well you know all the names that we put into this has to have does you know something from my memory and background. Uh, Stormy is the name of a uh, Melbourne Storms uh, rugby league team. That's why the guy wears rugby uh, league. If, if you're aware of rugby league, uh, it's uh, you know th they have the stripes that go as a V, whereas rugby uh, sort of goes yeah, side yeah. Of vertical. And mm -hmm. so that's where that name came from. PJ, of course, as I mentioned, from the designer did way back. Shibi from my sister's band. Um, Kira and Melina, uh, yeah, not really, um, just some names I just thought of. I think there, was, there is a child, um, a, a friend's daughter whose name's Kira, but it's, diff it's called, it's, it's pronounced Kira, but it's spelled K, uh, sorry, C I A R A. So it's, mm -hmm. I think that's Scottish or something or Irish, but yeah. So, Thank you guys for joining us tonight. Uh, thank you for all uh, friends of KP, uh, help, um, you know, jumping on here and supporting him. And I'm, I'm not, and I thank you for that because I think it's really cool to um, have that support for our, um, for our artists. Um, and I think because the hard work that goes into it. I mean, like if you think about something like, you know, Jim Davis's, uh, you know, Garfield, yeah. right? This is a huge book. But there are so many of them, and you know, him doodling about an orange cat, we get to enjoy now. I mean, this book here, uh, it says here 1978, right? Right at the bottom yeah, here, yeah, I'm not yeah. sure if you can see it, right? For decades, decades long, yeah. story, but it's still ongoing, so almost yeah. as old as me. And <laughs> you know, that's a crazy thing. This is the hardcover version of it, though, 
from that yeah. time. Mm -hmm. So, but, you know, this, um, let me see here. Um, published in Melbourne, Australia, the Omnibus. Mm -hmm. So I picked, I don't know how I got this, but we got that. So thank you for following us tonight and watching this. And like, as um, Constantino said, check out risingsuncomics.com next month. Uh, hopefully I'll be on time this week and get it all out the next, uh, the first strip. Got to choose which one's the first one we get out first. Uh, because we, like I said, we wrote them all um, as single stories, but now it's going to become a bigger, um, you know, a proper storyline. Well, I'm hoping that it'll become a proper storyline. And the other thing is, as um, Constantine has mentioned, uh, is our PJ and Shibi Twitter page is where he, where, which KP runs. And uh, that's his that's his baby. He gets to um, put up his artwork on it that he's doing for Shibi and PJ, uh, because I think that's cool to show showcase how you're working on it. And also people who are young kids or new or well, Twitter's not for young kids, but people <laughs> who work in the industry get to see uh, who are fans of cartoon artwork or comic strips get to read it or get to see the work that goes into it, and you see the planning. Uh, and it's, I think that's a great thing to actually see the process, right? That's why we watch freaking uh, uh, cooking shows because we want to see how does a chef does the work so we can learn how to do it ourselves. And that's a cool thing because um, being a chef, that's my analogy anyway. So thank you so much. Um, let me see. There's a new comment here before we go. Um, and it's your mom and you'll be able to read it. I won't. She says that's congratulations and greetings from Greece. So... Yeah. Thank you, Mama Lena. We'll catch you <laughs> later. And um, thank you, everybody. And Kakitiano, everyone, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Constantinos. Uh, what's time there, by the way? 9.02 a.m. right now. All right. So it's uh, it's Sunday for me here. It's 8.02 uh, p.m. So yes. it's Sunday morning for you? Oh, Sunday uh, yeah, morning? exactly. It's morning. Awesome. All right, guys. Uh, goodbye from Fangaray, New Zealand, and from Constantinos. Yeah, goodbye. goodbye, goodbye. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Awesome. See you guys. Good night. And wherever you are, keep well. Uh, love your family. Give them a good hug. This uh, for If you're in the north, um, in America, give them a hug for Thanksgiving. And anywhere else, thank you, Diana. I'll see you guys next time. And goodbye, KP. And goodbye, everybody from his family who's been following us tonight. Thank you, Diana.